Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the um, event listener pattern and this isn't really uh, Android specific um, but uh, I'm going to go through it here um, pretty quickly just because it's something that I want to use to simplify the architecture of my application a bit and uh, this is something that um, people who haven't seen it before tend to find very confusing because it is, it is quite confusing but um, it does help simplify your architecture in GUI kind of programs tremendously and uh, if you get lost in the following tutorial at all then um, I'd suggest just following it yourself and um, typing out um, something that's as kind of equivalent to what I'm typing something similar and gradually you'll see how it comes together. But on the other hand, um, if you already know it, or if you um, you don't you don't want to know it, then you could happily skip this tutorial. Now the point of this is that um, I want to. I've got this touch listener that's listening to my image, and it's finding out which points the user touches on the screen. And I want to. When I've collected four points, I want something to happen, and that's something could either be that I add the four points to the database and that I'm going to create shortly or I could check those four points to see if they're close to the points in the database and either way at this point in the touch listener code I kind of need some code that um, that does something with the database and which therefore may take a little while to return and I kind of just don't like um, situations where um, I've, I've, got, um, I've got a class here and I've got an anonymous class within that class and here what I will be doing is calling another method from um, the outer class when I've collected four points and it kind of just feels a bit messy to me and I want to hand it, handle it architecturally just a little bit different so very briefly what I could do is I could have an array list add these points to the array list one by one and then here check the size of the array list and if it's equal to 4 call the code that does stuff with the database that would be the simplest way to do it but in, to my mind um, an inelegant way and I prefer the way that I'm about to show you now so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this touch listener code and put it in its own class so I'll just do control X on this method this on touch method of the touch listener and cut it and I'll create a new class here so in the same package and I'm, I'm going to call it point collector and I'm going to say that the point collector class implements on touch listener and I'm going to paste in the method there that I had before and I'll just do control shift O to add um, the necessary imports for the log file there um, so now in my image activity uh, what I could do is I could give it a private um, instance variable of the type point collector the class I just created I'll call it point collector and I'll set that equal to a new point collector and now um, when I set my touch listener here I can just pass in my point collector object and that should run exactly um, as it did before and I'll just run this while I'm talking so we can have a look at it in a while um, so all I've really done is take taken this stuff that um, responds to um, touches and put it in its own class and now in this point collector class I'm going to give it a private um, list of points and I'm going to use the Android point class and I'll call this points and set it equal to a new array list of point objects and the Android point class is a simple class that just stores um, 2D um, points within integer coordinates let's just take a look at my application I'll go to DDMS and look at the emulator and I'm just going to click a few points you can see that the points are still coming out so it's still working which is always um, good to know. So I'll go back to Java here and now um, I'm going to add the points to an array list and in fact I'll change this to int 
and I use math.round although that is arguably slightly overkill to round these points when I could just cast them to integers but I use math.round to get the integer pixel coordinates here and for my debug output I'll change this from a two decimal place floating point to a um, integer value with percent %d which stands for decimal I think and um, now I'm gonna here I'm gonna add I'm gonna say points.add and every time um, we get a point because the users touch the screen I'm gonna say new point xy and add it to the list there and then I'll say if points.size is equal to 4 then I've collected 4 points and I want to tell my image activity class that it's time to check those with the database or add them to the database now I'm going to add a um, I don't want to refer to image activity directly in here because it's bad practice to have a situation where um, in this case image activity refers to point collector and point collector would then refer to image activity the two classes would have to know about each other in a sort of circle and that's um, a bit of a rat's nest and it's bad practice so what I'm going to do is to avoid um, having to have a reference to my image activity in this class so that I can call some method of it I'm going to create an interface here I'm going to go to new interface and I'm going to call this um, point collect collection listener uh, or maybe point collector listener actually I think I'll do the trick and I'm going to give this one method which um, just accepts um, I'll call it points collected and that accepts a list of Android point objects like this Let's add the import import for list there, Java util list. And then my um, my in my point collector class, I'm going to give this a private instance variable of that interface type that I just defined, point collector listener. I'll just call this listener. And in here, when I've collected four points, I'll say if listener is not equal to null, then I'll say listener and I'll call its method, its points collected method, and pass in the points. Like this. And uh, now the final step here is I'm going to go to my image activity and I'm going to make it implement, implements the points collector listener interface. And let's add the method here that we need add unimplemented methods um, I think uh, Eclipse is perhaps being weird oh but it has added the method so I think we're good and let's have some debug output here let's say log.d um, and debug tag actually main activity dot debug tag so that's a JWP um, string which is my initials that I defined earlier and let's just output here um, collected points and I'll just say here plus points dot size so that we can see the size of the array list which should be 4 and now um, if, well actually if I go, go back to point collector here um, and if I right click in this class go to source generate getters and setters and for listener I can add a set listener method click OK and that will set my listener instance variable to whatever object I pass in and that object must implement the point collector interface so I go to um, image activity here and now I say that I say point collector dot set listener this and now everything should be working and I appreciate that if this is the first time you've seen this and it is, is really a useful and important thing to know um, but it, it will seem pretty complex and I can just recommend going through this code um, looking at the different bits of it and typing it out yourself a few times 
And if you still um, find yourself stuck after that, you're probably missing some bit of information about how Java references work or um, how interfaces work or something like that. And I could point you in the direction of um, caveofprogramming.com where you can find lots of tutorials on Java. And um, they may um, enlighten you if you look at interface stuff and, um, and that kind of thing. But what we're doing is um, we're, we're saying that um, the image activity implements a point collector interface. The point collector interface just has this one method, points collected. Therefore, image activity has a points collected method. And we're saying to this touch listener, um, we're saying um, that I'm going to set the, um, where are we? Set listener. Actually, I've added this in completely stupid place. Let's get rid of it from there because I want to add it in the onCreate method up here. We're saying um, on the point collector touch listener, we're calling set listener and passing in image activity. And we can do that because image activity implements point collector listener. And this set listener method expects a point collector listener. Now the point collector listener, the put sorry, the point collector class here uh, has this method set listener. So this listener, um, the image activity will call this method and pass itself to here, um, and then we'll take the reference to the image activity and um, store it in this dot listener. So it's stored up here. And then finally, when we've collected four points, um, we will call the points collected method of image activity, which is going to be down here. And the point of this rigmarole is to make sure that the classes are not tightly coupled. So point collector, even though it's calling methods in image activity, it knows nothing about the image activity class. All it knows is that um, there's some class here which is going to be passed in, which implements a point collector listener interface. So as I say, it's pretty complex when you first see it, and I think there's no substitute for going through it a few times slowly yourself and typing it out and trying to get it to work. Um, but I'm going to um, leave this for now, and I'm just going to check that it works. Let's just um, run this. And what we should see is that when we collect four points, that um, we call the method in um, in my image view class, which will output some debug information. And what I'll also do after that is I'll also say points.clear. And I may remove that later because I'm still thinking about the best way to do this. But um, I think that once I've collected the points and something has been done with them, then we can clear the list of points and start collecting again. Now let's take a look at the emulator here and let's take a look at DDMS and so now well let's clear all this output and make sure I've got I'm just looking at the stuff with um, the JWP um, debug tag here my initials and I'll click on four points one two three four and so we collect four points and when we've got four it says collected points four and the reason for that is that um, if I go back to Eclipse here and go to the Java perspective, um, this code is being invoked when four points are collected, and that's calling this in image activity, which is outputting this message. So that's possibly the most complex um, thing we'll look at in this series of tutorials. And um, if you if you really don't want to have to learn this at this point, then certainly you could. Um, not do this. You could instead just um, have your um, on-touch listener as it was previously with an, an anonymous class and put in that code for collecting the points into an array list in, right in there um, and call this method or some other method from in there. And that would also work. I just feel that it's somehow less elegant than this way of doing it. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And until next time, happy coding.